The issue is if you look at these thermal systems, it's quite a big of thermal mass in terms of heating up and cooling down the systems if you need to shut down the, 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 uh, the, the operation or if you want to um, start it up again. Uh, there's a fair amount of uh, thermal response time associated with these systems. In our particular system, it's very easy just to uh, be able to switch, flip the switch on and off, you might say, and to start it up and, and uh, shut it down it's very quickly. It's also a lot more uh, regulate, can regulate the actual rate at which you release CO2 simply by changing the current you're passing through the system. And this can then uh, be effective in terms of overall capacity modulation. We think that this is a very flexible uh, system that can be utilized in areas that would be very difficult to incorporate or to install the, the conventional uh, steam regenerated type systems. Simply because we can uh, just put it in there without need for uh, integration. It's a modular system so it would be very easy to scale up or scale down uh, depending on what the actual application is. And uh, I think from a, a maintenance point of view as well, uh, parts of it can be taken in and out without affecting the rest of the uh, units. For this to be widely used, we need to think about the um, robustness of the overall process. We need to make sure that it can run uh, continuously for uh, uh, thousands of hours uh, without uh, uh, major uh, disruptions. And one of the big concerns we had initially is that when we do the electrochemical um, deposition of the copper from the amine solution that we start getting dendrite formation and things like that, they can then penetrate through the membrane separator and lead to short circuiting in the system. And indeed, the first few times we did it, that's exactly what happened. But we've been able to, over, able to overcome all of these issues uh, rather effectively. Um, so we, we're quite confident there now. We have to be concerned about the stability, uh, chemical stability of the amines that we're using and uh, these various uh, so, um, conditions that we're operating. I think that we are, are confident that we are able to handle these uh, quite well at the moment. And it could be very uh, other types of amine systems that could be very effectively used in this as well. It would be worth our while to sort of uh, optimize the, these structures.